evening, guys and gals. Good evening. I was asked to give a little presentation tonight on solar, and I'll try to keep it brief. I'm going to slant it towards it being one element of preparedness. I'm not going to talk about big solar farms and all that kind of stuff. I'm talking about us each individually and how this might be a nice piece in your preparedness toolkit. So that's my slam. Um, why solar power? Basically because it set up right can be available if the grid goes down. By the grid, I mean Ameren, UE, or whoever you buy your electricity from, Quiver River. If that should go down, go away. Well, this is a way to have some electrical power. And furthermore, it needs no fuel. We might all have generators <coughs> that will help us out in a pinch when power goes out for a few hours or maybe even a few days. But if it were to go out for months, you'd soon be out of fuel and you're not going to be generating your electricity anymore. So it doesn't need any fuel. <coughs> so let's start with, well, could I power my entire house with solar panels? PV stands for photovoltaic answers sure if you've got lots of money <laughs> um, but for most of us I think the answer is no I mean if you took your electric bill and looked at how much electricity you use each month and then figured out how big an array of solar panels you would have to have to provide that much it would be big and it would cost a lot of money and it would cost so much that it would probably take you 20 years or more in what you pay on your electric bill to pay for that. So I'm not going to talk from that aspect tonight that you're going to keep running your air conditioner and you're going <coughs> to run your big flat screen TVs and you're going to run all the stuff you run today and you're going to do it with solar. That's not going to happen. So okay then, from a preparedness viewpoint, I mean, what are the critical things? I'm talking about, let's say the power's going to be out for a month or six months or a year or more. What would you consider to be the most important things that don't consume a ton of electricity that you might like to power with solar? So I, I just put a few of my thoughts up here. You might have things of your own. But LED lights, they're really efficient, don't take much power. Um, we use little batteries for all kinds of things, but can't have enough of those on the shelf to last forever, so you want some rechargeable small batteries for your flashlights and your radios and all that, and you'd like to be able to recharge those. Communications, ham radio, scanners, weather radios, um, something you might consider doing is you could have the plumbing in your house piped up with a little 12 volt RV pump, and you could collect rainwater and pipe that into your house plumbing system and you could have a little battery powered pump that would actually pressurize your copper lines in your house and you could turn on the faucet and you could flush the toilet as long as you got a big enough tank full of water that you collected and stored. A grain mill, uh, a little, I'm not talking big side by sides, but maybe a little refrigerator or freezer. They make them in 12 volt power or you could use an AC powered little chest freezer or something and run it from a battery to an inverter, I'll talk about that in a minute. The ceiling fan. Then that's, uh, you know, if you were powering it directly 12 volts off of a battery, you could also run some, some of your normal 120 volt AC stuff in your house if you're not using it all the time. There might be a few things that are really handy, like some power tools, and you're only going to use them for 15 minutes. Well, that's not a lot of electric sucks your battery down quickly, but if you're not running at 24 hours a day, you could you could do that. But don't consider an electric hot water heater, your air conditioner, the things that use those 40 and 15, 60 amp breakers down in your uh, panel in the basement. Don't think about doing that with solar. So how does solar work? It's called photovoltaic. Here's a little example. Each one of these is a little 15 watt panel. 15 watts ain't much, folks. <laughs> And that's how big it takes to get. So this is 45 watts all together. Sun shines on this. It generates a voltage. Goes into a little charge controller. That's what this guy is. And it's smart enough to get the optimum use out of this to charge your 12-volt battery. 
That's the part I'm showing up here at the top. You could cut this stuff off and just do that. In fact, that's what I do for my ham radio shack. Or, if you got enough panel and enough battery, you could have what's called an inverter, and that battery through this inverter can change this into 120 volt AC. That's what you're using in your house. That's how it works. There's two different kinds of systems. One's called a grid connected system, and one is a grid independent system. This one is called grid connected, and there's a lot of folks out there trying to sell this these days. And with all the government socialism rebates and credits that we all pay our taxes and right. our Ameren bills, and then they take our money and they give it back to po folks that want to put on solar panels, um, this is what they're selling. And they propose you put a bunch of panels on your roof, <coughs> and then they, you connect that just through an inverter right into your electrical panel. And when the sun's up, the panels are generating, and whatever you're generating is that much less you have to buy from Amron. And if you happen <coughs> to generate more than you're consuming right then, you basically send it back on the power line to Amron, and they have to pay you for it. They don't pay as much as you pay them. <laughs> but the problem with this system is it's really not good for us when you're thinking about this from a preparedness. Because if the grid goes down, now you're left with the, some solar panels and an inverter. And so you're only going to generate electricity when the sun's up. Well, what if you want to turn some lights on? Doesn't really work too well at night. And there's no place to store it if you don't have batteries. So this is not what you want to think of for personal preparedness. Now a grid independent system, it, it is not connected to <coughs> your Ameren panels. Well, it could be, but then it would get even more expensive. So that's basically what I got sitting on the table. It's a solar panel, it's a little charge controller, it's a deep cycle battery, and you could cut it off there, forget about this, and just power 12 volt stuff. Radios, lights, things like that. And if you want, you can have an inverter so that you could run that circular saw once in a while, or a meat grinder, or whatever. So that's the difference between a grid independent and a grid dependent system. So I'd recommend grid independent. It's what's sitting on the table here, and it can get bigger and bigger, but this is just a little show and tell. Uh, next, so the angle matters. The best thing is for this thing to point directly perpendicular to the sun. The sun should be shining right at it, not at an angle this way, not at an angle you know, this way but right at it. That's the best. You're going to get the most power output from it. Now, for that thing without you being there to move it around, to track the sun as it moves across the sky and everything gets pretty complicated. So what most folks do is they just point the panel due south. So if south was that way, that's the way I would set this panel up. <coughs> now, the sun's going to come over there, come up in the east, it's going to track across the sky and it's going to set in the west. But when it's up the highest and doing the most good, it's going to be pointing pretty much at the panel. Pretty much perpendicular. Now the other thing that happens in that little diagram I'm trying to show you, as you know, in the winter time the sun is much lower on the horizon. It comes up. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to, I'll let you know what I'm talking about. It's, comes up low and it tracks lower across the horizon. And in the summertime, it comes up further north from east and tracks way up high and sets over there north of west. And, it, and the daylight hours are, you know, 15 hours long. And in the wintertime, they're only eight hours long or whatever. So there's a <coughs> compromise for that. What you can do, and for St. Louis, is you could tilt this thing you could just go out there in August and tilt this thing to a certain position and then go back out in November and tilt it to a different position and leave it until February or March and then maybe in the summertime you'd take these legs off the back and you'd have it tilted you know, pretty flat like that because it's 
in the summertime. It's real high. So you don't have to go out there, let's say, uh, four times a year. You just change the tilt a little bit. And that would make it collect a lot more solar. That happens to be the angle. So if you built a little bracket that would hold this thing at 12 degrees, which is way down here flat, or at 36 degrees, or at 64, which is about like this, three positions would cover you for the whole year and do a pretty good job. That's what this guy's done on the end of his house here. He's got this panel hinged up at the top, and he's got these telescoping legs, and he's just showing you how it could be moved from here to here and uh, sit there pretty sturdy. Okay, now I'm going to get into a little bit of math. <laughs> I'll try to keep it simple, and I don't want you to memorize any of this, but I'm just trying to make a few points. First of all, some electricity basics. DC means direct current. That's what you get out of a battery. A little D-cell battery's got one and a half volts from one end to the other. A little nine volt batteries that we used to put in our transistor radios has nine volts. Like our car battery has 12 volts, so it's all direct current. Uh, current, you connect something up to it and it's just going one way. Alternating current is what you have in your house and in this room, and the, the voltage is going up and down 60 times a second, and the current is going this way and this way and this way and this way 60 times a second. So they're two different things. You can't hook batteries <coughs> up to something that's AC and expect it to work, and you can't hook AC up to your flashlight battery or whatever. I mentioned earlier an inverter, that's a box that basically can convert DC, it can take 12 volt DC off that car battery and generate 120 volts AC, you can power up the oscillating fan or whatever. So that's the thing you plug in your car or your lighter to plug stuff into? Yes, yep, exactly, that's an inverter. <coughs> and they come in little and big and bigger, yeah. yep, that's okay. an inverter. Uh, lots of RVs have them. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, now the math part, <coughs> electricity, volts times amps equals watts. So if I got a 12-volt battery and I hook something up to it and there's 2 amps floating in the wires, 12 times 2 is 24, that's 24 watts. That's how much power the thing is consuming. Same thing on 120-volt. Uh, it could be AC and it's still volts times amps is watts. So 120 volts plugged into the wall. If you were sucking two amps down the same wire, now you'd be talking about 240 watts, or 24 watts. And then, <laughs> if, you, if you know what a kilogram or a kilometer a kilometer means, that just means a thousand. So a thousand watts is one kilowatt or kilowatt. And then if you have something that's using one kilowatt of power and you run that thing for two hours, it's going to consume two kilowatt hours of electricity. Or if it's using 10 kilowatts and you run it for half an hour, it's going to use five kilowatt hours. Does that make sense? So that's what you're buying from Ameren is a kilowatt hour. Yeah, Jeff? When you buy a battery, like a deep cycle, they talk about amp hours. Can you expand upon that, how that would? Yeah, if you can hang on just a minute, I'm going to talk about that at the end when I get oh. into the batteries, but that's a great question. Thank and you. it's, well, I'll answer it real quick. It's, if it's a 12 volt battery and it's got 100 amp hours of capacity, amps times volts, 100 times 12 volts is 1200 amps times volts, which is watts, watt hours. I'll get to it in a minute. Yeah. You just take the amps times the 12 volts, mm -hmm. and that gives you the watt hours. I get there. I'll wait for a follow up question when we get into that. Okay, sorry for the words. I threw this together yesterday and <laughs> you get too verbose. So let's take this. Pretend this panel's 100 watts. It's not, it's only 45, but let's say. You know, okay, how many kilowatt hours can I get out of this panel in a day or a month or a year? Because that's what I know I'm buying from Amber. So on average, 
the sun comes up and tracks all the way across here and you get the equivalent of about three hours worth in a, all the way through the days of the year, three hours a day of its peak output. You know, when the sun first comes up, it's not going to generate 100 watts because it's coming at such an angle. When it gets up in the middle of the day, it is, and then at the end of the day, it's not generating much anymore. And even though you had a 12 hours worth of daylight, you didn't get 12 hours worth of its peak rated output. So let's say this is a 100 watt panel times three um, 100 watts would give us 300 watt hours. An hour. so. A 100 watt panel, divide by a thousand and you get it's 0.1 kilowatts. And that 0.1 kilowatt panel, that's 100 watts, gets about three hours worth of that full output a day, you get 0.3 kilowatt hours per day. That ain't much, folks. We don't do this to save money, we do this to save lives. You, and, I, and I spoke out, it might take 20 years to pay back. A 100 watt panel and a little controller like that might cost about 200 bucks. And it's going to generate about three cents a day worth of electricity. Or about ten dollars a year. So there's your twenty years. You buy that thing, and you think you're going to save money because you're not going to buy electricity from Amron. You're fooling yourself. You're not. It's going to take you twenty years to get your initial investment back. But that's not why we do it. We do it because we might have a little bit of electricity there when things go bad. So if that hundred watt panel generated 0.3 kilowatt hours per day, which ain't much. Well, okay, what could I power with that? So 0.3 kilowatt hours, if you want to convert it back to watts, <coughs> multiply times a thousand and you get 300 watt hours. So what that means is I can power a 300 watt widget for one hour and this would have generated enough power. Or I could power a smaller 100 watt widget, 100 watt light bulb, but only incandescent one, for three hours or a 60 watt device for five hours. Do you see the math there? It's just the watts that's being used times how many hours it's being used, that's the watt hours. So, you know, a 100 watt panel, which is gonna be about twice the size of this, not quite, um, would power a 100 watt light bulb for <coughs> three hours. And then the next day you'd have to charge up your battery again. That ain't much. <laughs> LEDs are a lot better. A 12 and a half watt LED would probably look like a 1600 watt bulb. It still ain't much. But that's how you do the math. Mm -hmm. Or we could turn this all around the other way and say, what is it that I want to power? And how big a panel would it take to generate enough juice day after day after day to do that? So let's turn it around that way. Lots of numbers, but hang in there with me. This is just an, an example I made up. Let's add up what we want to power. Let's say, all right, I got a ham radio. I'm going to run that thing three hours a day where it's just receiving and listening. You look up in the front of your ham radio book and it says your radio takes 0.65 amps when it's just receiving. And it takes 12 volt battery. And I want to run it for three hours. Do the math, you get 23 watt hours. Now I want to key the mic and transmit and talk. Now the radio takes more power. Now it takes 10 amps instead of 0.65 amps. Do the math. One hour's worth of talking on that thing. Use a lot more juice. How about we want to run a few little LED lights at 9 watts apiece for two hours in the evening. There's the number. How about a grain mill? How about some miscellaneous power tools, but you're only going to run that circular saw for a little bit when you cut through the board. Just this is all made up, but it's add that up, 297 watt hours. Mm -hmm. Well, I just by coincidence happens to be an example of a hundred watt panel. If I had a hundred watt panel and that battery sitting there, I could run all that stuff for that many hours a day, come out about even. So it's practical, you know. You know 
generating a lot of power, but it might be a few things that are really important, like a little bit of LED lights, a ham radio, uh, some power tools. So I think that's the end of my math. <laughs> but I have some math questions. Yeah. Oh, you're on now. You're on now. Here's here's the battery thing. So we talked about the solar panel. That was all about how many watts does this generate? And how many watt hours or kilowatt hours will generate? And you're basically putting that energy into the battery. Think about it this way. This battery is a five gallon bucket of water. Okay? This thing is producing a little trickle of water. And when the sun's up, it's pouring a little bit of water into that bucket. Now when you're going to use that power to turn on lights or a radio or a power saw, you're going to take water out of that bucket. You turn on one little LED light, it's just going to trickle a little bit of water out of the bucket. When you pull the on switch on your circular saw, it's going to run a lot of water out of the bucket, but you're going to let go of the switch on the saw and it's, you're not going to run the thing for 24 hours. That's kind of what's going on here. This thing is trickling a little bit of electricity into the battery whenever the sun's up. And then you're going to take it out either a little at a time or a lot at a time with whatever you're using. So then, how big of a battery do I need to store that stuff? That's what I'm talking about here. So Jeff asked a perfect question. They're, they're rated in amp hours, not watt hours to make it nice and confusing for us. This is a big old trolling motor battery in this box. I bought it at Walmart for about 80 bucks. It's rated at 100 amp hours of capacity, reserve capacity. Well, if you take the amp hours times 12 volts, amps times volts is watts. So you get <coughs> watt hours. Now, if you want that battery to last a long time, you want to you don't want to take it all the way down to zero every day and charge it back up. You'll you'll wear out that battery in six months or less. So they recommend you only use about twenty five percent of its charge before you recycle it again, and then it'll last five ten years. So here's our example: a one hundred amp hour battery. 100 amp hours times 12 volts is 1200 watt hours of storage. But we only use about a quarter of that so that we don't kill our battery. We want to drain the fuel tank from full down to three quarters and then fill the tank again. I'm about to lose my oh, battery, so battery it's time to shut up. Perfect. <laughs> So for 25% of that, it says uh, I should only drain 300 watt hours out of this battery every day and then put that 300 watt hours back in there every day. Well, that just happened to work out just about right with 100 watt solar panels. So nice round numbers. If you can't remember anything else I said, you had a 100 watt panel and a 100 amp hour trolling motor battery. You could power some of that stuff up. Ham radios and lights. Yeah. It won't hurt to to leave it and not use the battery, right? No. Nope. Okay. Good question. If you don't use some of it, will this thing overcharge it? And the answer is no. That's what this little charge controller does. When this thing's all the way peaked up, it'll quit charging it so it doesn't overcharge it and cook the fluid out of the battery and all of that. Last slide, um, I had a few more, but I forgot to write them down. Some useful websites. There's a place down, I think they're around Springfield or Joplin, Missouri Wind and Solar. They got some pretty good prices. They got a kit on there with a 100 watt panel and a charge controller and stuff for about $200. That's pretty cheap. And I think the panels themselves, if you wanted to buy two or three, they're, they're only about 100 bucks for a 100 watt panel. Uh, I mentioned the little charging up little batteries. This is a, a little battery charger for D's, C cells, double A's, triple A's, and nine volts. You can charge it any and all of them. You can put four in here at a time. 
And this thing has a little cigarette plug adapter on it, so you could power that up with your 12 volt battery here into here, and now you can charge any kind of little little bitty batteries. Pretty handy. Are those simply just for the rechargeable batteries themselves? Or okay. Yes, you can't put a Duracell in here. Um, it wouldn't work. It would, I don't know what it'll do. I have probably both kinds of batteries okay. right here. Blow yeah, it up, one that blow it up, but probably crack the seal. Just don't do it. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> I have one that you can do Duracells and one that you buy the rechargeable for. Really? I didn't know you yeah. could even recharge the Duracells. Yeah. It's not very efficient. It's, it's not. not. It's, it's not. not. These little guys, I, I use them all the time in my LED flashlights and everything else. And you know, by the time you buy about two or three Duracell batteries, you've paid for the rechargeable battery, and you can recharge it a hundred times. So. Do you run them completely down? I try not to. Okay. Just like they said on these, it's better if you don't run them all the way down. Yeah, Joe. If my <coughs> ham radio, when I'm just listening, draws one amp. I got a hundred amp hour battery. Does that mean I've got like because it's obviously twelve volts? Does that mean I actually have a hundred hours in theory of yes, sir? Oh, okay. Exactly, that's what it means. And then you would so have you run your battery all the way down to okay. yep. yep. But if you said you, I don't want to want to want to run the fuel tank down to three quarters on right, the day, you'd have twenty five. Right, so you can run that thing all day, and you would only drain twenty four hours right. with one amp, right. and, and then you ought to recharge your battery. Well, the system's going to charge. And you didn't mention in one thing, not to take over, John, but that little unit in between the battery and the solar collector, make sure that your battery doesn't, on a cloudy day, discharge back out through your panel. Because it's got diodes in it, and diodes only let current flow one way. So right. it's really important. So overnight, otherwise this won't try to discharge yeah, your battery. Otherwise, it'll discharge day. overnight. Your battery will start to discharge. So that's why you need that thing in the middle. <laughs> So this little website here is um, where I bought, and I think this thing's only about 30 bucks nowadays, yeah. and it comes oh, with an AC plug, so now when it's available, you can charge your batteries out of the wall, and a cigarette plug, 12 volt DC, so you could charge it off your car, or this battery, or whatever. Very handy for about 30 bucks, and then go buy you some rechargeable batteries for your stuff. That's a good thing to invest in. This is a little bitty <coughs> solar panel. Got a bunch of little adapters in here, but it's got a fitting on it that'll charge my cell phone. I can lay this on the dash of the car, and it's got a like oversized battery in here for a cell phone. It's this little guy charges this battery, and then I can plug this into my cell phone. Pretty cool. Zip so where did you find that? that? I knew somebody would ask that. Hell, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, we, we got one. My parents gave all of us for Christmas one year. They gave up all the kids so that if something happened, maybe as long as the, you know, the, yeah, if, if, as long as their service, we can still talk. Yeah, yeah right. If the grid power goes right. away, probably cell phones are going right. to go away if it's long term. But at and least you can see what your point is. That's when your ham radio comes. This is just another little toy. Um, this is a little light stick. I think they're intended for uh, in RVs, but these are little LEDs on here. And this thing is amazingly bright. Let's try to show you here. Um, I mean, if you turn the lights off in a room, that would you could work at a desk easily with this, and I think it's about one and a half watts or something like that. And they, and they got little plugs on them. You can string them end to end to end, and you can you know, light up something. Foot long, I don't know, throw it over your kitchen sink. One last point you can certainly run more than one battery in parallel and up your storage capacity. Too, Absolutely, which you didn't mention. So, how yes. you three, four work. of them in parallel, and then you can have three, four, five hundred amp hours or whatever, and that'll still charge you're right. it all. You're, you're right, you just got a bigger gas tank, you right. don't have to fill it up as much. Well. All the stuff still uses gas at the same rate or uses electric at the same rate, but if you had five of these batteries all in parallel, you'd have five times as big of a gas tank. Um, might be nice to get through some cloudy days in the winter time. Because mm -hmm. there's some times when we don't get a lot of sun. <coughs> or you could run theoretically more things. Right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but if you're not putting as much gas in the tank right. that you're using, eventually that tank's going to go dry yeah. and the batteries will go dead. So mm -hmm. you have to have enough 
um, solar panel, but keep pouring water in the bucket or gas in the bucket. <coughs> Do you think those outside year round? Or? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Does that solar, does that charger tell you when you're about 25% down on your charge? How do you know when you're, when you're almost out? Got a little digital display, which you can turn off so you don't waste power, and it says 12.9 volts. Or a little chart. I wish I had it. You can get them in all different. But if you're, I think a 12 volt battery at full charge is 12.6 or 12.7. I thought it was 13. 13. Three. It's over 13. Well, I think it was on. Which vote on? It isn't that high. Yeah. You can look it up. It's not that high. That's that's what this thing will try to keep charging at that point, but and this will display. 13 point something, mm -hmm. but as soon as you disconnect it and put a little load on it, it'll pretty quickly go down to about 12.6 or 12.7, and that's basically 100%. Mm -hmm. And then, to answer your question, that little chart says, okay, at 12.7 volts, at, uh, let's say 90% charge, and at 12.6 volts, it's 80% charge, and when you get down to about 12.2 or 3, you're getting kind of low. So that's kind of your gas gauge. Mm -hmm. That voltage readout, along with a little chart, will tell you how far down your battery's getting. Is this the Harbor Freight in the system? This is the little Harbor Freight, 139 bucks when you catch it on sale. 45 watts, that, and a battery. This comes with it. Uh, the battery does not come with it, I'm sorry. It's just the solar panel, the charge controller, and a couple of little uh, light bulbs. So the panel and the yeah. converter come together? Yeah. And did you build a PVC stand or did that come with it too? That came with it too. Mm -hmm. And it's got a couple different angles you can set it at just by moving the screw. Pretty handy. These are kind of mounted on a little, uh, they're older ones are this like slick. PVC. This is like a molded PVC. thing around it outside to kind of protect this glass panel. And you know, it could take some pretty decent sized hail. That's, it a break. that's a covered glass panel. This is glass, yeah. But it's covered. Oh uh, no, it's the glass is right there. It's just covered around the edges. Okay. Where so if you you leave it, the whole everything out year round, do you cover the converter and this the battery? Would put that in your house. It's got a long wire. Okay. That, that's that all makes more sense. Yeah. It's all coiled up. Yeah. Here. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. drill a little hole in the wall or something and run the wire from outside into your house. You want this to face due south, depending on how your house is. Maybe you gotta put it on the roof to avoid some trees from shading it. Maybe you're lucky enough you can set it out on your back patio if that faces south and you can just have it right on the ground. It's supposed to be efficiency for every day on your panels. How long do they last? I think they say they're supposed to put out 80% of their rated wattage after 20 years. So they last a long time. Yeah. They, they'll last a long time. So did you get the battery from Harbor Freight too? No, I bought the battery at Walmart and I brought the little case. You don't need that case. Right. This thing, by the way, has a little button on top you can push and see a green light or a red light or tell you how charged it is. But you can just set the battery there and clip these right on the back. It's a 12 volt battery, right? Get a 12 volt deep cycle battery. Don't get the battery that you use to start your car. Get the one that the fishermen use to power the trolling motors. Okay. They're designed marine a marine battery. They're designed to get sucked way down and recharged. Your car starting battery, you don't take much juice out of it every time you start your car. Can you upgrade that meaning could you add like another panel or two? Is you sure can. They, they even got that. some slick little plugs. You could put three of these side by side by side and plug them together. Yeah, Daisy chain. Then where did you find the case for your battery? Uh, you can find them anywhere online. I think I might have bought that from Sportsman's Guide, which is a little catalog I get in the mail. Yep. Yeah. Any down? Yeah. How does that protect it? Uh, I mean, that's good for getting electric, but what happens if there's an EMC? Is that going to get fried in your house before it's even put up? Even if you get in, even if you get in the shed in the box? If you got it in a shed in a metal box and all sealed up, I'd say the chances are damn slim it's going to be damaged. I actually believe everything I've read, this thing will probably survive an EMP. What really gets stuff is a long, long wire, like Cameron Huey's electric wires that are on the poles out there. That's a huge antenna. And when you get an EMP, it sends a huge voltage surge down the line. 
and it'll fry anything you've got plugged in in your house. But if you've got 20 feet of wire going from here to here, I don't think that's that big of an antenna, and I think it, there's no guarantee. But I'm leaving mine out all the time. I'm not packing away for when things go bad. I'm using it. So in your thing, normally you think if it's if it's in a box, just a regular box in a shed or something, you probably wouldn't get hurt. Well, what works really good for EMP protection is a galvanized trash can, believe it or not. It has to fit pretty tight. And then if you bought some metal uh, tape and sealed the lid, it would be even better. There's some YouTube videos on it. So if you really want to protect something from an EMP, you can't use it when it's in the can, but that's where you ought to store it. But can it touch the inside of the can, or just got to be a space between? Probably the space. It, ha it has to be insulated. Best if you metal. have some foam pads or some bubble wrap works really good, you know, wrap that stuff in that so it's not touching the metal can. 